Do you want to make action cinematic video shots from Transport Fever that look a little bit like this? If so, stick around, and in the next five minutes I'll show you exactly how to use the camera tools. Right, let's start with the easy stuff. So if we grab hold of a vehicle, in this case a plane, uh, you've got two different cameras to choose from here. The first is the tracking camera, which is in the top corner under locate. Click on that, and you've located it. You're then free to use your mouse to move the camera around however it suits you best. Why not try zooming in or out? But we're not done for camera views within this vehicle. So in the screen here, you'll see a picture of a camera which says enter cockpit. And lo and behold, we're not actually on the cockpit. We're, uh, we're, we're sat just in front of it there. Now this gives you a much closer view of your vehicle and then you can use your keys to move around. So that's going down. Hmm. This one's going up. Yes. And you got to the sides, but you've also, you can use the cursor keys as well as your W, A, S and D uh, to move around and get a really rather tremendous angle. Same thing works on absolutely any type of vehicle. So we're, uh, we're on this, uh, this truck now and we can, uh, we can do exactly the same kind of maneuvers. Anytime you're done with one of these, you could just hit the escape button and return to normal. I'm riding on a lady. Not sure why, but there you are. If you zoom out a bit, it's less likely to give you motion sickness. So in order to enable the cinematic camera, the first thing you're going to want to do is come out to the front menu here and then go into settings. Go over to advanced here and make sure that you have enable camera tool selected and debug mode selected. And then once you load up your game, you will find that all those options are in fact enabled. Once you've loaded up the game, you will now find that in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you've got something that looks a little like a video camcorder. I'll zoom in on it now so you can see exactly what I mean. So I've decided that I want to get a shot of this ship departing from New Vegas. So the first things to do before you, uh, you dive in is make sure the ship is staged and ready to go. You can't move stuff forward once you're in the camera tool. You will end up having to wait around with your shot queued up. Once clicking on the camera manager, it pops up a screen that looks like this. You've got two choices. You can stick in picture mode just to grab screenshots, which is nice. Or what I suspect you're here to find out about is video. Click on the video tab and you've got a whole bunch of options to play with. Your first option is to choose whatever resolution takes your fancy. This goes all the way up to 8K if you're a glutton for punishment and you've got more hard disk space than you know what to do with. You can then choose the focal length that you want to record at. Everything ranging from a 35mm and upwards and the game camera. Experiment with this to find the one you like best. Next you're going to want to choose how many frames per second you want to record. Bear in mind that every single frame is recorded as a separate image and those images are several megabytes in size. Therefore, the more frames per second you choose, the greater the amount of hard disk space you're going to use up and the longer it's going to take to render. Now you can choose whether you want to show the path that your keyframes are following, whether you want it to draw a crosshairs to show what you're pointing at, and whether you want the final render to include the game UI. Now it's time to actually record the track we want our camera to follow. This can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. But every great video starts with the first step, and that means hit the plus key here to lock in your first keyframe. To set the track for your camera, simply move the camera to another position and add a keyframe. By changing the camera speed or the time setting, you will affect how fast the camera moves and over how many seconds. Add as many keyframes as you like. The camera moves from keyframe to keyframe using the settings that you've given it. You can change the settings from keyframe to keyframe to suit your purposes when putting together the video that you want. If you want to change how far is travelled, the speed of travel, or even the focal length for each individual keyframe path, you're welcome to do so. You can even adjust the position of the skybox if you want to get a particular lighting setting. It's worth doing a test playback of individual keyframe paths before you record the whole thing. This will make sure that you're not clipping through scenery or missing the best shot available. The only downside to it is that any vehicles you've staged to appear within your shot will move during the preview process, so you'll have to line them back up again before you can hit record. But this is worth doing to ensure that your shot is as good as it can be. As mentioned before, this records one frame at a time. It's quite a lengthy period. Don't be concerned by it being choppy on the screen. This is not what the video will look like when it's done. 
I suggest you now go and make a cup of tea. Once you've gone through the arduous process of recording this beast, you might want to go and find where it's stored. Go to your Steam directory, and then into User Data. Then you'll need to click on your user ID, and then into the Transport Fever 2 ID, which is 1066780. Then within the Local folder, you will find your way to Recordings. And there you'll see the video that we just recorded. Opening that up, you'll see it is absolutely jam-packed full of TGA files. These then need importing into your favourite video editing software. Once you've got your editor loaded up, you can choose to either import each individual frame, or with some software, if you select the first frame only, it will recognise that it's part of a sequence and grab the rest for you. So there you go, that's really all there is to it, and here's the output of what we just put together. I couldn't leave you hanging without at least showing this off. The only real limitation when putting these videos together is the ideas that you come up with. Experiment, get it wrong, then get it right, then get it wrong again, then publish it, upload it to YouTube, then try and convince someone to watch it. I've been Colonel Failure. If you want more of this, subscribe so you don't miss out on it. I'll be back soon with more. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.